I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage, and we're having our monthly tech meet, and we're going to be taking apart a Turbo 400 uh, hydromatic transmission. This is a big heavy-duty transmission. They, the General Motors used these in the big Cadillacs and the big big trucks and all that for years. Rolls-Royce used it. Uh, it's a little bit different for the Rolls-Royce. It has a longer tail housing, so they can bolt. Typically, there's a big electric motor on this. Uh, it's an actuator, so that beautiful, delicate little gear shift you have on the steering wheel is just an electrical switch. And it goes down here and it manually shifts. This is a, the manual shifter here, this lever. I can't move it now because it's so much weight on it. But that's what, it's in park right now when it's forward. This uh, should lock. You can hear that, right? All right, let's see if I can get it. Now I'll go into another gear and it goes right back in the park. Whoa! I just pissed my pants. <laughs> oh, it's red, is that bad? <laughs> uh, anyways, so anyways, when that comes out of gear, I'm gonna pull that off right now. This, my mechanic left it on. This, this car is an 86, there we go, that'll do it. See, now it turns, 86 Corniche. Um, the reason we're going through this, it worked, uh, but after the car set and was cold, sometimes you'd go to put it into gear and it wouldn't do anything and then you give it a little gas and it, brrr, it would come into gear. So it was leaking real bad and I told them, you know, in light of that issue, if we're going to have it out, we might as well do, go through it. So that's, he agreed to it and that's what we're going to do. And it's very fortuitous since I was struggling in my mind on what I was going to talk about today. So I sold the job this week and here it is. So that's, that's just your little manual lever. Typically this will be disconnected before the transmission comes out. Uh, this has a torque converter up front that just slides on. Now if you remember on the hydromatic, those of you who were here for that, you had to take snap rings and all that kind of stuff to get it off. Uh, this is a sealed unit. This is a true <coughs> torque converter, so it multiplies torque. Uh, whereas the other transmission has a fluid coupling and that actually kind of loses torque in a way because it has a certain amount of slippage. As you can see this is a big, first of all it's full of fluid. You watch when I do this you'll see it comes out, right? And you think, okay well if I just turn it upside down it's going to drain. It will not. It's only going to drain because the fluid's going to go down to this point and then it's going to stop draining. When you flip it over, what's going to happen is the fluid's going to sit in here instead of coming out there. So you can use a siphon to get it out. Uh, these are sealed units. If you look here, there's a big welded bead. I already have a rebuilt unit right there. That What they do is they cut this bead and they go through it, clean it out, make sure everything is right, and then they weld it together and balance it. So these are not serviceable by a typical place. You have to have specialized equipment. So anyways, there's a torque converter. This is uh, the front pump area. If you look in here, there's an um, aluminum case, cast iron pump here. I can turn it for you guys to see too. Um, and it's got two shafts here. One is stationary, the big one on the outside. It holds a certain amount of angle <coughs> inside here fixed. And then the, the engine turns this thing around with the flywheel. So when the engine's running, this is spinning. And eventually, when it spins enough to, to apply enough pressure, it'll start turning this shaft, too. There's that. OK, so this is the tail shaft. It is not bolted on like the hydromatic, either. It is, just slips on with a spline. Now, this car, it has a the tripod type flange. Earlier cars and later cars have a round flange that has bolts to it. This has a rubber coupling in the middle like Mercedes used and BMW. <coughs> Very prone to cracking and vibration. And should you want to take one of these out for the rest of you people in the world, uh, there's a plate that matches up to this when it's bolted on the car. And you just, that plate just fits into this shoulder and centers it and it's real thin. Don't go through all the effort of trying to pull the drive shaft out 
thinking you have to. All you got to do is pop it with a hammer. That plate will slip back. This slips in, and you can drop the tranny out without pulling the cross member or anything else. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this on that bench over there so it's out of the way. Okay. Um, one little hint. There is a seal. This is the tail shaft seal. Uh, it has to be replaced. That's part of the deal. It's leak for leaks and it comes with the kit and all that kind of stuff. But once this housing is off, it's really hard to get off. So I usually pull a seal before I pull the housing. And I use, this is like a seal puller is what they call it. And it has a hook, it hooks into the metal part of the seal. And then it has a handle and then you hit it with a hammer. And if we're lucky, it'll come out. If not, it'll just, just disintegrate for us. Being lucky. That's because we're videotaping. I love Murphy. So, what we're going to do is I will deal with it later, but you can take a chisel, bang between that little lip here. There's a little lip. I will get it right now. Hang on, folks. So you can use a little chisel, or I like this tool a lot. This looks like a gasket scraper, essentially. But it's really stout, has a metal end on it, and it's a chisel. So it allows you to get into really... Uh, thin, tight. I use it sometimes to separate heads from blocks. Little by little, working them up. So. Of course, I have more than one. I use surgical instruments. Sorry? I use surgical instruments. Surgical? Somebody sent me a really cool email the other day, and I think you might have sent it to me once about a gynecologist. This is what the joke says, so no offense. Who decides he's tired of doing his job and he wants to become a mechanic, so he does all this study and goes to trade school, does all that. And then there's a final exam. <coughs> and he does the final exam, which is overhauling an engine or fixing the inside of the engine. And uh, he gets his results, and he got 150%. <laughs> and every, the, the, the doctor, he's just going, how did I get 150%? And they said, well, you got 50% for your practical, 50% for your technical skills, and another 50% for doing it through the tailpipe. <laughs> 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 You've heard that, right? I'm sure I butchered it. As you can see, it's starting to walk out. Right now, I have to do this my side here. See how it's walking out? And it should come out easier now, hopefully, because otherwise, if I kept doing that, it might hit Stacy. <laughs> So, as you can see, that was not really easy to get out. So if this was out and on the bench, right, or if you s put it in a vise and squeezed it, it would crack, it would be awesome. Uh, so that's just a little trick. I always do this first. So you're not going to reuse it. <laughs> we know somebody who might think about it, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, okay. Yes. You know, you can buy one for about 10 bucks, though. So. 